Okay. Hey everyone. Um, Stephanie here. I just wanted to talk to you guys about um, the challenge that I'm going to be doing for the month of October. And uh, it's going to be, well, what I'm doing is love your spouse challenge. And the concept behind this is that I feel that um, a lot of times we say that actions speak louder than words and even though it feels really really good to hear the words I love you sometimes we want to see that put into action and so this month that's what I'm going to do so I am putting love into action and I'm doing a um, every day I'm gonna do a new action to show my love for my husband Keone and I thought it would be really fun if any of you guys would like to join me and in this challenge for your own significant other. Um, so the reason why I picked October is because October is the month that I met Keone eight years ago. And uh, it's also his birthday month. So I thought, what a perfect time to let him know how important he is to me. Um, so with that being said, the first day, which was October 1st, I did... Um, a simple kindness and so the idea behind a simple kindness is that we all love to know that we're being thought of especially by our significant other and it's something that is so simple that we could be doing um, very often in our relationships just to lay a really strong foundation of friendship and kindness in our relationship so that when we do have the bumpy roads we know that we have a good solid foundation filled with love and support. Um, so the simple kindness that I did for Keone was I made him um, some cold brewed coffee because he absolutely loves it. And we don't do it very often um, because, I don't know, it's kind of a process. I mean, it's a simple process, but still. Um, so basically what you do is you just get a jar and put like some coffee grounds in it and then fill it up with um, room temperature water and just let it sit in the room temperature for you know, 12 hours or more. And then you strain it and then put it in a pitcher and put it in the fridge. And so I did that, but I put a cute little note next to it and just letting him know that I appreciate him and that I love him and some things that I respect about him. And he uh, absolutely loved it because he had a really bad day at work. Um, you know, and so he just really appreciated to come home and have that for him. And and it kind of reminded me that sometimes we don't know what our partners are going through throughout the day. And when they come home, it would be nice to have an environment that's very loving and supportive for them and for ourselves um, so that we can have an environment to thrive in and to feel safe in. And so I thought that would be really great. And the other idea that I thought about behind doing this uh, month of loving my spouse um, is the five love languages by Gary Chapman. And he talks about how we all have these, uh, how there's five different love languages and we all have one dominant one that really allows our love tank to feel full. And so I kind of thought it would be fun to play around with all five love languages, which are um, gifts, acts of service, quality time, words of affirmation, and touch. And so I thought it would be really fun to kind of make sure to get all those areas in, even though I know he has do a dominant love language, uh, I still thought it'd be fun to play with all of them. And by the end of the month, hopefully his love tank is nice and full and that he feels really loved and appreciated. Um, so yeah, I just think that if you want to do this, I would encourage you to pick a kindness that you don't always do, just something that might be a little extra special. And they can be simple, such as, and free, you know, you can just warm up a towel in the dryer so that when your spouse is done with their shower, they have a warm towel. You can make them a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or pour them a glass of milk or um, give them a foot massage or a back massage or... Um, play their favorite song when you drive to the store together. You know, it could be so many little kindnesses that open the door for them, um, that just lets them know that you're thinking about them and you just want them to have a great day. So that was day one, was a simple kindness. Day two was a simple gift. And so some people absolutely love gifts and that's their love language and, um, other people don't really care if they get gifts or not. And either way, it's just perfectly fine. Um, again, like I said, I'm going to do all the different areas this month. And so 
you know, you know somebody who loves gifts because they can tell you where they got something, who gave it to them, what the occasion was that they received it. And uh, it's just a way for them to feel really special and really loved. So yesterday I went shopping with a friend and we went to this really cute store and I thought, oh, this is a perfect opportunity to get Keone a little gift to let him know that I'm thinking about him. And it was fantastic because they had really soft t-shirts there. And Keone absolutely loves soft t-shirts. And they're really hard to find, especially the level of softness that he really likes. So they had them there and I was so excited and they were even on sale. So thank you universe um, for saving money and getting good quality stuff. So I found these shirts. I mean, they were just very simple. And this is what I mean by a simple gift. It wasn't fancy, it wasn't really expensive, but I knew he'd love it. And so they're just like these, um, really soft organic cotton t-shirts and so I got him a blue one and a darker blue one and um yeah I mean they're just so simple there's nothing even on them it's just like a simple t-shirt but I know my man and I know that's what he likes and this one's green with a blue pocket woohoo and then they even had like these really soft shorts there and he loves wearing shorts regardless of what season it is so found some nice shorts and yeah, they were, um, they're vegan and everything. So it was absolutely fantastic. And so I got him those. And then when I um, came home and gave them to him, we had like a little fun fashion show and it was just really fun. And I think doing little things like that really helps. You just feel connected on a d deeper level in your relationship, knowing that you're thinking about each other and, um, just creating an environment filled with love as an action. Um, so that was really great. And like, again, like I said, if gifts don't have to be super fancy or super expensive, I mean, if you want to spend a lot of money on gifts, go for it. If you don't, that's fine too. It's the thought that counts behind them. Um, and if you're thinking of your partner and something that they actually enjoy, the gift means more. So today is the day three and um, today is about kindness in words. And I think we've all heard that saying of, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And so today I thought I would put that into action and, you know, leave out any negative or negativity or criticism when it comes to um, the day with talking with Keone. And I'm even extending this to my thoughts. Like, I don't want my thoughts to be filled with negativity about Keone or anything like that. Um, he's a very loving and kind man and he does so much for our marriage, for our son, and for the world. And I want to make sure that he knows that I know that and I appreciate it and I see it in him. And I often feel that we all receive so much criticism in so many areas of our lives by other people that why, why would we want to include that in our relationship? Um, and yes, there are times to talk about growth areas and say that, you know, this area, I really want to enhance it so that we have a stronger relationship. And there's definitely times for that. What I'm talking about is the day-to-day -day criticism that can kind of sneak into your relationship and it kind of feels like you're tearing each other down instead of building each other up. And I really believe that relationships are about building each other up and being each other's biggest supporter and biggest fans, you know, helping each other up when one of you falls, um, not the person who kicks you when you're down or even pushes you down. You know, that's not what a relationship is to me. A relationship is very supportive and it builds you up. And so when we let those little criticisms and negativity start taking over our relationship, we lose the... Um, the intention of building each other up. So that's what today is about, is having kindness come through in our words to each other. And even if it's something as um, like a simple example, right? Like maybe your partner's doing the dishes, but they're doing the dishes different than you would do the dishes. So then we're like, oh, here's an opportunity to criticize and put in how I would do it because I feel like my way's better. Well. Is that always helpful in a relationship? Like just because you're, you feel that your way is the right way to do it doesn't 
mean that it is. And it also doesn't mean that that's something you have to bring up to your partner all the time. You know, um, if they're doing the dishes, woohoo, yay, thanks for doing the dishes. That makes my day easier and I really appreciate it. Um, you know, or I don't know, they made dinner, but they made it different than you would. Really, is that what you're gonna spend your energy on? No, I said, yay, oh my gosh, thank you for making dinner. My belly is full, it was delicious, I really appreciate it, right? So we can, we can kick out that criticism whenever it tries to come in and instead invite love and kindness with our words. Um, so yeah, that, is, that again, that's just what I'm doing today is making sure that my words reflect the love and the intention that I want in our relationship because I can control my piece of the relationship. I can control my part and how I respond and what I can contribute. And that includes my word choice. Um, and I also just wanted to share when it comes to, you know, responding to your um, partner, I feel that that is a really um, important part in building a healthy and strong relationship. And in, in my experience of working with couples, uh, how you respond to them is really important. And um, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Gottman Institute or John and Julie Gottman, but they had do a ton of research on couples and relationships. And one thing that they discovered is these little things they call bids. Now, bids are just a way that you're trying to connect emotionally with your partner. And it's so important for like the happiest relationships turn towards their partner and welcome that engagement when it happens. And uh, the not so happy, who they call disaster relationships turn away from each other and uh, don't find as much fulfillment or happiness in those relationships. And so an example of a bid could be something as simple as, oh wow, I really like that car. And your partner can, has a couple options. They can turn away from you and just ignore you completely. They can turn away from you and say, why? That car's ugly, it's dumb. Why would you like that car? Or you can turn towards your partner and engage and acknowledge and say something like, oh really? What do you like about that car? Tell me, you know? And it's that simple to turn towards them, just acknowledging their statement. Or it could even be another example. Let's say they say, um, you know, I felt really dismissed uh, earlier when I was trying to talk to you and you changed the subject. Again, they could turn away and just not say anything more. Or they can turn away by saying, oh my gosh, I didn't dismiss you. You're so sensitive. Or they can turn towards you and say, Oh, I did not mean to dismiss you. I'm so sorry for that. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Please continue. You know, and obviously you don't have to use those words verbatim, but you get the idea behind what I'm saying. You know, you could acknowledge and validate and respond to them, engage, ask following follow-up questions to get more feedback from them versus turning away and dismissing them or insulting them. So just some things to think about, and I would love to hear how, um, you know, a kindness that you've done for your partner or a gift you've given or received, um, maybe a kindness that you received that really meant a lot to you, or um, just how you're able to keep the criticism out of your relationship. And also, I just want to say a caution or a reminder, if you decide to do this challenge alongside me... Um, be very aware of your expectations of how your partner responds, because this isn't about how your partner is going to respond to your actions. This is about you letting your partner know that you love them through your actions, regardless of how they respond. If we get caught up in our partner's response to the things that we're doing, it may discourage us to continue moving forward. And I would love for you to just show that you love your partner through your actions and not have any um, expectations of how you think they should respond. And instead, just allow them the space to respond however it is they respond to those acts of kindness. And you just continue to put your love into action 
with the intention of creating this amazing, loving space in your relationship without being caught up in how they respond to your actions. So anyway, good luck and have fun with this. And I will post a daily challenge um, every day for the month of October for Love is an Action. Okay, thank you. Bye.